Hey, welcome back everyone. Today, uh, I'm going to try to answer a couple of questions. Well, actually one question that's gonna take a little bit of explaining, which is my VEC and correlation between my VEC timing and engine ignition timing. Uh, but before that, just want to show you what's going on in the shop. It's December and we got some projects. This is something I'm really excited about. My, our first one of these projects, which is, this is a Lancer, 2015 Lancer. And we are putting a Evo X motor in it. This is Nick's car. We are doing the wiring right now. The 2015 Lancer apparently is very different than the other model Lancers. Uh, big shout out to Jonathan, my boy who's in Florida. He has done a couple of these. He's been helping me out with this. We're right now in the process of finishing everything up and I'm um, seeing if I could bench this ECU. If not, we'll have to get an Evo X ECU. But uh, yeah, very excited. He has a G, uh, GTX 3582 and we put the Evo X uh, fuel uh, hanger because it has a return line. The stock one Lancer does not couple of quirks about this Lancer. I think the pinout is very similar, but this particular Lancer uh, model had a five pin math sensor, which had the, and no IAT. So we're, one of the wires in the math housing uh, goes in here in the Evo X, which is the IAT. Um, there's a few differences, the cam angle sensors and the MyVec look different, but the pinouts are the same. The, uh, the ignition, I'm sorry, the uh, uh, crank sensor, it's in the back. We have to stretch that. There was some modifications we needed to do on the starter. He wanted an AC. We wanted to give him the uh, Evo X alternator, which is much larger. So we had to modify a little bit of the hangers here, no, no big deal. Um, and this car does not have a power steering, so the belt's different. So there's a little modifications and trial and error needed. Uh, motor mount needed to be adjusted as well. But this is using an Evo X uh, engine with a uh, Lancer transmission 5-speed. So we also upgraded the, um, the cooler the radiator because you know it's obviously it's going to put out more more heat and the stock uh, radiator is half of that of an Evo X so yeah I'm very very excited to get going on this more to come on this um, but yeah let's uh, let's go to the engine room so the question um, is from Colin Suggs and thank you again for uh, sending any questions sorry for the late reply how would you recommend wiring in a flex fuel sensor for Evo X? Would you recommend buying a kit? I always recommend buying a kit because especially the plug and play kits, even for me, um, I don't want to do all the wiring work or any of that stuff. I think sometimes it is uh, worth paying a little bit more um, for your kits. Um, so if you can get a plug and play kit, yeah, uh, make sure it's really truly plug and play. I think uh, Driven Fab has one that anyone can just install. It's easy to do. Uh, we have one as well, Blueprint Autosport. Um, but yeah, I would definitely recommend plug and play. And for the wiring instructions itself, as you can see, if you go to Tefra uh, V3, just you know, Google that. <clears throat> he shows you where to wire it pretty uh, detailed, I think. Um, there's two spots, one of the, I'm sorry, three spots, one on the ECU pin itself, one at a junction, which connects to the same pin, and a third one uh, by the fuel uh, pressure sensor, which is also the same pin. Um, I hope that answers your question. Um, question number two, what is the difference between an Evo MyVec timing and main timing, which assuming main means um, spark plug? Uh, I'm sorry, ignition timing you're referring to, when it's appropriate to change one and not the other. 
uh, and also PS keep making videos thank you so much I love your content and variety of EVs you too uh, gives a great variety of mods and engine builds to look back on when I move forward tuning and building my Evo. Well, so for that, I'm going to have to physically kind of show you a uh, Evo engine and, and specifically with my VEC, and I'm going to use a Evo X. So um, we're trying to get to the bottom of what the correlation is between uh, timing, well, various timings. So there's one type of timing that's the ignition timing, which basically when um, the spark plugs ignite your air fuel mixture in reference to where the piston is in the bore. Advance being um, on its way up in the compression stroke, the uh, spark plug ignites and retard being on its way down or after it has reached compression uh, full compression and then it ignites. So that's that's ignition timing Which is a spark plug uh, if you make sure ignite ignition Now there's another kind of timing which is uh, the cam timings um, in Mitsubishi it's uh, called Mybeck, But it's cam timing in general and that's also in reference to the uh, The crank positioning and uh, the piston which is in, in turn pistons positioning so this is an evo x block and it has both intake and exhaust my vet on this particular one uh, we have deleted the exhaust uh, my vet with a uh, magnus billet cam gear because you know the exhaust uh, with the tougher spring tends to bend these uh, gears um, distorting it, warping it, and messes up your timing. So we have replaced it with the billet one much stronger on the exhaust side. But the, the difference is uh, between the ignition timing and the Mybeck timing is um, when the piston is going up, say the intake, it'll open early. There's a little uh, oil press, oil control mechanism inside that allows uh, this cam to kind of move in degrees in reference to the crank, which allows it to open early uh, than what you set the timing for. What that does is it allows the intake air to go in. So for example, say you're an exhaust stroke and the exhaust valve is open and the air is going out and the intake starts to open because you advanced it at a certain degree while the exhaust valve is open and the exhaust air is coming out it creates a uh, like a siphoning uh, effect scavenging it, it uh, creates a low pressure in the combustion and it helps the high pressure uh, intake charge air to move in faster and allows it to move in more um, also, the other effect it has is now that it opened early, it's also going to close early. So when it compresses on the next stroke, it's literally going to be able to compress it more because the valve stays closed longer because you opened it earlier, uh, which produces a lot of torque on low end. So something similar happens on the exhaust side. As you can see, this is zeroed out right now. Um, but if you retard this timing, which means it'll open the exhaust valve a little later, when the uh, power stroke happens, you'll keep it in that uh, power stroke for longer because the exhaust gas is opening a little late. As soon as you open this exhaust gas, it's going to let all the pressure out of the cylinder, uh, which is reducing torque. So if you open it a little later, you'll produce more torque down low. Um, and I think it also increases the, the, uh, the exhaust uh, flow rate too, the, uh, the speed of the air. But that only works on low end. On high end, you kind of need to zero this out because everything is moving too fast. You need it to um, open a little later than normal. So zero it out, that should be okay with large cams. 
and on exhaust cams if you advance it it, it kind of helps the top end because you're allowing the whole process to happen faster um, but typically what I do is I just zero this out and I keep that zero after the spool is up especially on large cams on some of the cams like this one I'm not even going to use the exhaust um, my back timing so that is the difference between a ignition timing which is a timing reference to the ignition uh, system which is a spark plug to the crank and the stroke uh, versus the valve uh, timing which is my back and re also reference to the crank I hope this helped so this is what my base calibration is for my back on uh, stock cams with stock turbo this is where I start by no means is something you have to do I've seen my back maps that are very different uh, matter of fact I actually start this at um, at kind of pretty low um, and the reason why I do that I've learned that a lot of people don't take care of their cars and a lot of time the my back I'm, I'm sorry the, the cam um, the, the chain isn't in good condition they haven't done the timing service so I take a reading of what the Mybeck is doing before um, I actually go into this. So this is uh, basically where I start. Uh, on the intake, you know, it's not that aggressive. I'm in 25, I think the most you can go is like 30. And then by uh, 7,000 RPM, it's normal, zeroed out. Sometimes I'll even reduce this even more uh, just to get, uh, you know, more of a boost up top. Uh, for spool on stock turbo, you really don't need anything more than negative 10. Um, you can go aggressive, it'll kick a little bit more, give you more torque down low. But depending on the client, depending on the, on the person, how they drive, I adjust this. And that's basically it. Uh, on large cams, you don't really need uh, negative my back. Again, please, this is what I do. There's a lot more going into this. A lot of uh, data logging, driving, and you know what? Dyno is like the last piece um, my videos show, but there's like an hour, hour and a half of street driving and just mannerisms before I do anything. And my back for power, I think only should be done on dyno because the difference between 25 degrees and 30 degrees, if it's negligible um, or sometimes it loses more uh, power on uh, mid range when you increase. Um, the the my back you wouldn't know on on a street tune so this is where my base is um, I hope it helps someone and that is my goal at the end uh, just to be helpful as possible also I'd like to thank everybody who has uh, been subscribing and watching my vid and you know sending me good thoughts good feelings and even sharing some of your misery which makes me feel human like okay I'm not the only one going through all this as a tuner they can they see what everybody's going through and sometimes during seasons I see a trend in what's happening and I do share with my clients that hey you're not in this you know in this boat by yourself so always uh, I would encourage you to share with your tuner what you're going through um, and, and with me if you want to ask a question which I love and I'm trying to answer them as quickly as possible um, feel free and just put questions in the subject so I know what you're asking and please please make sure you mention if you want your questions aired some people ask some personal questions uh, or they don't want to you know seem to complain about their tuners and they just want my feedback I completely understand so uh, thank you again for watching my videos thank you for the subscribers keep subscribing keep uh, watching and more to come